Okay, so we're first going to you know, talk about the uh, the word of fabricator. So you have mentioned it so much, so many times, and just want to know, well, what is the role of the fabrication in your sculpture pieces in terms of the materials and the methods that you are using? Especially when we're talking about the fabrication of fabricator. Uh, yeah. the f okay. Uh, I used the word fabricator originally because uh, I made constructed sculpture, okay. sculpture. Um, and uh, uh, I thought that the fabricator described that uh, very well. There's also a double meaning in English with fabricator, which we can discuss another uh, on another occasion. But the uh, um, the material um, it allowed me to make the material. Um, important in the work and to become, uh, I thought material had a role to play along with uh, a structure, work, form, that the material became a component in the, me in the meaning of the work. So a fabricator is a kind of, in that original sense I used it, it was a kind of artisanal sense that there was a, a language of construction which uh, um, uh, you could either use or mm -hmm. break. Okay. You don't have to follow the rules. Uh, or you can use different rules on the wrong material. You know, there's no uh, right. uh, uh, there's no reason why it ha things have to be done a particular way. But it's just that um, uh, construction does allow you a sequence of processes. Okay. Good. So you're gonna you're gonna regard yourself that as a as a fabricator that you you mean that you do everything by your hand. I don't do everything uh, I use. And, uh, there was a point when I did do everything. Uh, uh, and then I began to think that actually it was... Um, uh, uh, distorting the work okay. if I, I tried to do everything. Right. And it was becoming a sort of signature thing and could be a trap to, to get into. So I'm quite, happy to, uh, I'm quite happy to do things, but I'm also happy to tell other people what to do. Okay. Uh, I don't think there's any difference between who puts the screw in, whether I put it in or somebody else puts the screw in. Uh, and it was that was the kind of issue, really. That does it matter who does who does something? Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I think it's uh, uh, and it is kind of liberating to an artist to realise that you can um, that many hands make light work, as it were. Yeah. Um, and that your so it wasn't so the ha the interest in the hand wasn't particularly an interest in my own hand, but it was an interest in oh, the relationship of the hand to the material is a general okay. issue. Okay. Okay. All right. So, what's your point of view about the uh, about the new technologies? Because there are especially the computer-based technology that may influence so many sculptors to use the use the software or something that is instead of their artificial hands to do the work. So what's your point of view about the more advanced technologies toward the, uh, the sculpture creation? Uh, Especially when we're talking about fabricator. Uh, okay, well, uh, what, uh, in terms of the workshop, what the fabrication, what the change in the technologies brought in mm -hmm. is a increased accuracy in relationship to yeah, right. particularly cutting metals. Mm -hmm. And I would say that um, the, uh, in relation to the ship to the work I do in wood, that's almost totally non-computer uh, organized, mm -hmm. although it's at a very high level of expertise. Uh, and uh, uh, with this work in metal, it's uh, um, uh, working with um, uh, programmable, programmable machines has uh, made certain cutting things very easy yeah. and making some kinds of jointing joints much easier. Um, in terms of ceramic, uh, then the the technology seems to come in in terms of actually inventing materials and the way in the new kinds of materials that are used for um, ceramic production. Uh, I'm wondering whether those can be used as um, making material, hand making materials. Uh, and uh, um, uh, 
uh, the I guess the last point is that uh, uh, it, the last thing is to do with print with uh, whether you're using a uh, um, a piece of software to develop a, uh, uh, an object and to print it or to replicate it um, then uh, that seems to add um, that seems to add something quite interesting that you can make something happen that didn't exist before. So what about these pieces, like they are more delicate pieces than before? Do you, did you use any computer-based technologies to do these? Are cut, well, these, uh, the, these are cut on. Uh -huh. the, the original drawings are drawn by hand. Okay. And then it's uh, developed through, then the, the drawings are transferred to a, okay. Okay. Uh, a cutting program. Okay. And then the, uh, this kind of precision of, uh, of joint is a lot to do with uh, okay. uh, being able to cut to extreme accuracy. Uh, all right. So it, it comes to the, the the calculation at last before yeah. it. Okay. That's perfect. Okay. So that comes. With these, um, is a bit in between. So the uh, the profile is um, did go out into the computer, uh, but then it's handmade. And so the ends are the ends are actually cut from a scan of the object. They're not cut from, um, so they're cut to fit rather than the object being made to a very pre precise uh, uh, outline. Uh, although the cutting of this profile of this heavy steel is dependent on there being a drawing existing in a that drives a laser cutter. All right. So you draw first and then scan it, and then uh, yeah. So the drawing. The, well, the, actually, this is no. This is scanned from the. So the uh, yeah, it was drawn, mm -hmm. and then the middle piece was made, but then the ends were scanned mm -hmm. because the uh, uh, there's a variance between the the drawing and the actual okay. thing. Okay. So they're cut to fit. Okay. So uh, on that piece, do you want to express the, van the the randomness of the of the creation? Because it seems that the, uh, the curve are not just the, the perfectly calculated ones, but the hand drawing, hand drawing freestyle. Uh, the curves, the, the curves are not. The, no, the curves are all drawn with a. Mm -hmm. The original drawing, the curves are drawn with a. Mm -hmm. um, um, and not with a computer. They're hand drawn mm -hmm. with a compass. But, yeah. uh, they should all be the same curve. Mm -hmm. So that comes to the next question. So it's not a free, it's not it's not a freehand drawing. It's a drawing. It's a drawing help help with a drawing instrument. Okay. okay. So what is the role of uh, of, of drawing in your in your sculpture creation? Do they do you treat them as a separate art style or just the assistance of creating the sculpture pieces? Uh, both. both. The, um, Drawing is a parallel activity, uh, and I do a lot of drawing that's independent of uh, uh, making, and sometimes uh, I draw before making, sometimes I draw after making, uh, and sometimes the drawing, I see that the drawing re is related to uh, things that appear in the sculpture afterwards. So. Um, Drawing for me has sometimes provided a vocabulary. Uh, actually, at the moment, I'm, I'm interested in drawing things I can't see. So the drawing is. A, um, uh, I sometimes use drawing as a way of uh, um, inhibiting what I'm doing rather than enabling what I'm doing. I have already checked your website and yeah. found that there are so many uh, pieces before that they that you use the, the, the sleek wood, curved wood, mm -hmm. like ribs to create a, a, a relatively uh, organic shape mm -hmm. or sh shapes. Mm -hmm. But it seems that you present right now, it's kind of a, kind of a, you use the plan or more delicate than the, the former ones. I just want to know whether there is a shift of idea recently. Recently, in recent years, from a more 
uh, handmade ones to more like this? No, I carry on making wooden works which are mm -hmm. equally organic, although they're mm -hmm. rather more um, complicated, complex than they were before. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> to do with investigating twisted, uh, mm -hmm. uh, twisted elements. Yeah. The um, <clears throat> I think you could say that uh, I, I made a lot of work. <clears throat> I made a lot of works at one time that were. It was a kind of rib or a um, cage-like structure, yeah. uh, and the, the material was on the outside. Mm -hmm. And then I began to be interested in trying to find ways in which the material could be all the way through without being solid, mm -hmm. without uh -huh. making it solid, so that uh -huh. then it got kind of quite uh, interlinked. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, um, the, the um, I mean these. The freestanding works are very closely related to drawing, mm -hmm. that then is transferred to uh, uh, structure and then goes back to drawing again. Uh, and then, so there's a conversation between drawing in flat and uh, um, coming out. Uh, the uh, your question was whether the um, uh, whether there is a change in your mind. Uh, not that I'm really aware of. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think the work has higher production values than it used to have. Okay. Uh, but I think the, the, you know, the color is a kind of fairly, applied color is a fairly, uh, it's not new, but uh, it was something that came in in the, um, uh, 15 years ago, and that continues to be something that I'm interested in, in the relationship of color to surface and uh, how that affects the work. Okay. That's and that came out of yeah. using color in ceramics. That's I just want to ask because it seems that your pieces do not have so many colors in your former, in yeah, your, your older didn't. ones, but it seems that suddenly <laughs> everybody will yeah, have to and do I that. Can, uh, and the, his, the reason for that is to do with making ceramic, ceramic, okay, uh, and which had glazes on the surface, mm -hmm. and the glazes were colored, okay. uh, and then uh, um, that kind of removed a kind of taboo uh, on, br on applying color to the surface and uh, um, uh, and then I became interested in uh, applying in ways in which I could put color on the uh, on the metal uh, and, and I've, there's very few wooden ones which have color in. I did yeah. try some, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm still kind of maybe interested in. Uh, um, I did applying, try applying things like gesso to those very traditional surfaces to wood, uh, and I got interested in uh, Spanish painted wood okay. uh, sculpture for a, for a while, and the way in which um, the surface was. Uh, the relationship between a, a kind of realistic surface and a material volume. Uh, and that would still be something I'd be uh, interested to do, to apply colour uh, uh, to uh, build up a sort of, uh, a, like a polychrome mm -hmm. colour surface on, a, mm -hmm. uh, on an object. With these uh, well, with, the, with the coloured ones here, it's it's a paint. Though I have also used uh, car lacquer, it's another it's a, to, to uh, um, colour the surface. It's a question about the surface, really, and what yeah. the relationship is yeah. between the surface and the uh, and the volume. Uh, in the past, I always resisted painting because it seemed to. Uh, uh, cover something up. Yeah. Uh, but now uh, I'm um, now I find that there's also a positive side to that. That the, the color itself has things that are interesting. Uh, and I think it's quite clear in this show um, that when you go from one side of the room to the other yeah. there's a change of character. Mm -hmm. uh, and that change of character is predicated on there being a coloured surface and then a not a coloured surface and, the, uh, and how the uh, and then the surface of the steel 
in the one in the back, that kind of ham, particularly on the one in the back there, uh, also uh, puts the question of uh, the natural colour mm -hmm. uh, on this steel yeah. uh, into issue as a uh, as a colour as a surface colour mm -hmm. as well as just a material colour. Yeah. Okay, got you. And that's and a complicated answer, but it's actually not that. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, th 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 these are these are the, the alphabet series of, of alphabet. Yeah, this and is the second series. Of yeah, I learned that the, the former ones are just paint on the on, on, on the wall as a relief. Right. Yeah, and right now it's kind of yeah. The way the, um, um, the first group of these that I made mm -hmm. from different drawings, not mm -hmm. the same drawings. I happen right. to. Okay. Um, uh, I've been working on. Uh, um, Actually, the the way uh, I've been working on some um, like wireframe structures, some skeleton skeletal structures, mm -hmm. and I wondered what they would be like. And so the original was wonder what they'd like if they were flattened, mm -hmm. like as if you put them in the road and they were run over, and you know what okay. what you got out of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I started drawing, as it were, those those flattened objects, and then. Uh, and when that that um, and then that became a uh, um, I began to have an idea about what it was that I was doing, which was combining these polygons together and different mm -hmm. ways of dividing a, mm -hmm. uh, a, a volume uh, and then I thought that they as it happened, I had twenty six of them, so then they became an alphabet, mm -hmm. and I thought about transferring them into reliefs. And that it would be interesting also to try and do find 26 different ways to mm -hmm. fold metal yeah. to make the profiles. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't really good enough to get 26 different ways of folding metal, mm -hmm. uh, but the original ones uh, I'd always imagine them with the metal on the outside mm -hmm. and the fold uh, as it hidden. And then when the first ones were made, I looked at the back at the folded side and I thought that the channel. Uh, itself was interesting, so that then uh, uh, it was more interesting than the front side, okay. uh, the bare metal side. So then I started to, look, to make different channels uh, and to put colour in uh, in the channels. Then um, for a commission here, I put two on top of each other. Uh, a very big public work in okay, Beijing yeah. at Rick. Yeah, right. Uh, I put two coloured ones on top of each other, mm -hmm. uh, again still attached to the wall. Mm -hmm. But then I thought, well, if there were three, then one of them could come down to the floor and hold the others against the wall. And then I thought, well, actually, if there's three, you can probably make it freestanding. Mm -hmm. And then you have, then you have both sides. Right. So it's um, gone from. Uh, actually, they started as draw started as objects mm -hmm. that then became drawings, oh. that then became okay. reliefs, uh, that now are starting to kind of expand outwards again into um, fully th three-dimensional objects. Um, and at some point, um, I'm not sure if, there's, you know, I need to do some more to find out, because the edge is also, in some cases, mm -hmm. the, ed the edge profile is also kind of interesting. Yeah. This kind of, uh, yeah. uh, and the fact of having something in the middle is, is uh, uh, that you can't really see from either side is interesting. All oh, right. So, okay. So, how about these? Uh, these are the custom series, right? Yeah. The custom series. Okay. So, uh, so what's the point of the custom? Well, in that case, it started. The original ones were started with a. Uh, um, uh, it started quite simply. Uh, we were making something, and we made we had too much material. Uh, all right. we, we had some <laughs> some material okay. left over, okay. so, uh, okay. uh, so some, big, some big tubes okay. left over. Okay. Uh, uh, we we over ordered on uh, uh, for a, a work that I was making, and then and for a long time it was uh, uh, every time I went to the factory it was I'd look at the where the tubes were stored, I think oh, I should, I should do something with those. Mm -hmm. uh, and at first, I thought about just joining them together to make a, mm -hmm. a single shape. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I tried doing that, and that didn't really work. Okay. And but then I thought about 
then I remembered some things I've been doing in ceramic, which was to do with cutting um, throne pieces, uh, yeah. pottery pieces, yeah. and joining the inside to the outside, and thought that uh, uh, the uh, that it would be interesting to do that with the steel, and so you right. get this kind of linear, this uh, mm -hmm. inside-outside curve, making a continuous line. Okay. Um, the ends were a, were a problem mm -hmm. uh, and, and remain a problem to be sorted out because you, you, you can't because there isn't a uh, you can either have it flat or you can use dishes or you can use donuts and they've always been slightly uh, uh, had to be resolved but the so the custom came out of uh, uh, and then I thought well this is quite like what people do with customizing cars you know that you take yeah. a standard component mm -hmm. so custom was originally to do with the that American meaning of customizing, where you take a standard component okay. or a standard model and you uh, uh, and you alter it in order to uh, uh, individualize it. Okay. Anyway, see, people customize their iPhones, you know, whatever, by sticking stuff on it. Uh, so it was um, that was a sense that we had a, a standard tube that we were cutting and kind of, uh, 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 and then obviously link language plays a kind of role in what I do. Uh, um, custom uh, actually has lots of meanings in English. Which has, it's a kind of very broad word, right. yeah. uh, not only to do with mm -hmm. that kind of fabrication mm -hmm. technique, or kind of manufacturing, or kind of individualized manufacturing technique, but it also, uh, um, you know, talks about habits, talks about yeah. legal duties or whatever. Right. He's just told you you're going on too long, yeah? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Okay, so these are very, very important questions that I have to ask about that. Okay, so next question is about, it's about the, the local ones. You have been here for how many days? For like five to Five days. No. Okay. No, six, uh, I came here Tuesday, and today's Tuesday. Sunday, so no, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, no, Friday, days. Saturday, Sunday, yeah. Yeah, tell us about six, your, your impressions about the Chinese, I mean the, the modern sculptures here, not the Asian ones, and your expectations of the Chinese. Sculpture. Well, I've been to China. I've been to Beijing a lot. Okay. okay. Uh, I've been to, and I've written even yeah. uh, since I've been coming to Beijing since 1999. Okay. Uh, and I've taught it, mm -hmm. visited Kaffa many times. Oh, right. So, uh, and I've, I've lectured in Kaffa, uh, and um, have watched the way in which. Um, the art scene here has uh, matured okay. uh, and developed and become uh, more interesting um, uh, and less um, um, less expressionist actually okay. be the, mm -hmm. so do you have I'm any very bad with names Okay. I'm very bad with names. The name? I'm very bad with names. I recognize faces, okay. but actually I've, I'm very bad at remembering Chinese names. So mm -hmm. I actually have seen a lot of Chinese art. Okay. Uh, and right. uh, uh, I have talked to a lot of sculptors here. Right. Uh, uh, and it's... Um, uh, but I, ha I have great difficulty okay. remembering people's names. Uh, any advice about the Chinese Chinese new sculptors or sculptures that you think should be modified or? <laughs> no, no, I don't think it's. I don't think it's my role to modify, to instruct. Uh, my I understood that my role here was to, uh, when I first came, was to provide information, mm -hmm. which wasn't already here. So when I first came here, I gave mm -hmm. three very long lectures on the history of British sculpture. Okay, uh, and, and I've taught. Uh, subsequently, um, and it's been a uh, um, because I've also made work here, um, even f you know from in nineteen eight was making work. Uh, there's been a dialogue about uh, practice and also the relationship to the public domain. All right. okay, got you. Um, so how about your teacher? Because I've learned that your teacher, important one, is the Anthony Cow, right? You learn Anthony from Cara was never my teacher. You learn from him. No. No? He was never my teacher. <laughs> this is a story that comes from Anthony Cara's studio that is right. not. Okay. So he would have liked 
me to be his student, perhaps. Uh, so have you uh, learned anything from him or inhib inhibit something from, from him? That uh, uh, I've, uh, there, is, there are works of Anthony Carroll's that I like a lot, okay. uh, um, particularly from the small works. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, from the works from the 60s and the 70s. Okay. okay. <sighs> wow, there's still... So many questions that I have got to. Sorry about that. Um, okay, let's see. All right. Okay. So you would love to talk about the, uh, the 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 physicality about your about your sculpture that that every sculptor should be experienced by by visitors who come here. I just want to know whether that that is to say a larger pieces or the also, also including the small pieces. No, I make small works, and, yeah, and I'm happy that... Yeah, how to uh, express that be, uh, physical uh, tap? Physical uh, well, it's difficult. Yeah. It is yeah. difficult. Uh, mm -hmm. It's as hard to make small pieces as it is to make big works. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, 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 it can be quicker sometimes. Mm -hmm. Just uh, abstract them and then uh, attract them to come to your pieces and go around and... Um, the, um, I think things have their own rules. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't really make small things and then make big things. Mm -hmm. okay. um, although model making has been a part of... So, okay. Until 15 years ago, mm -hmm. then model making was really never part of my practice. Okay. Uh, I'd always make things of the full size. Um, and sometimes from drawings, but really sometimes I even draw the full size. Okay. Uh, when I started working in ceramics, um, I say never, never's, never's a big word, but the, uh, uh, so it would occasionally I'd work out a detail in a model. Mm -hmm. uh, when I started working in ceramics, we actually worked, I worked a lot in terms of small things that became big. Okay. I worked a lot in models. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the, uh, and that meant that there were a model version and a, a big version. Yeah. But I didn't change. Um, uh, and then I also started thinking about the way in which the model permitted me to think about other materials. Mm -hmm. uh, and that became interesting. So, and your joints. Uh, I have checked your website and found that your joints can, can roughly comes into two categories. One is more like a sketch, or a sketch one, or and the other one is like, well, my profession, like a construction document or a construction joint. So what are the two differences? Uh, which one is more important or which one is directly uh, related both, to your, both, yeah, uh, to your sculpture important. pieces? But, uh, but one is more like an engineer one that you, uh, especially you, you can, you can just make write, write on the, on the boat, where's the boat located at, yeah. and the other one is like more sketchy one, you just draw the, uh, the, the flow Yeah, but and then the there's curve. also other drawings which are mm -hmm. things in themselves that are finished mm -hmm. completely, that don't have any relationship to... Uh, to the sculpture. To the sculptures. Okay. So you use the, uh, the, the like the, the document, the construction documents once to just directly use it to the to the sculpture piece, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. The last should be the last one. <laughs> uh, it's about the uh, the the topics you wanna discuss tonight. So what is that? The, uh, the the topic that I wanna talk about the future, but I ended up with thinking no, about the past. No, that's uh, That's not tomorrow tonight. tonight? That's tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Okay. So, what is that past? Is that a, a personal experience before, no, no, it's, or the tradition? It's a uh, it's a long historical past. Oh, uh, uh, what kind? Look, in all or all along the historical river, right? Uh, okay. I started looking at uh, uh, it's to do with some thoughts I've had in relationship to looking at. Stone Age objects. Okay, okay. that's a long history. Uh, all right, so my question is kind of good. So any supplemental ones? <laughs> <laughs> Time this up. <laughs> yeah, that should be good. Yeah.
because because my profession is landscape architect and architecture, we also discuss about the uh, about the to become a fabricator that work into into the construction site. Yes. Yeah. And and do the things by yourself. Mm -hmm. So maybe more weird. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, architects. It's architect, uh, probably architects actually learn more about building than sculpture students do these days. I notice that architects that and when you learn structure by you don't learn structure by drawing, you learn structure by building. Yeah. I'm glad to, to 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 see that these pieces are really like a, a, our profession that we can share the same character. <laughs> we can do all the things like the uh, making the, the surface of the building yeah. to become like that.